Now we're looking at repeated factors, section 1.4, the fourth section, chapter 1, the year 2 pure book. And uh, repeated factors is where we have something in the denominator where another denominator also has that as a factor. So here's some examples. So let's say we had 3 over x plus 2 over x minus 1 minus 5 over x squared. Right, we have repeated factors here. Yeah, because x is actually a factor of that x squared. So that makes a difference to what we multiply by. Here's another one. Um, 7 over x minus 1 minus 4 over x minus 1 squared plus 1 over x minus 1 cubed. So here we have a repeated factor of x minus 1 here. Yeah, x minus 1 is a factor of that, and x minus 1 is a factor of that. So when we have these repeated factors, that does make a slight difference to our working. So here's an example here. Um, you can see that there is a repeated factor. Can you see it says x plus 1 squared? Well, that could have come from a fraction where you have x plus 1 and x plus 1 squared. So the key thing is, if you had something like um, x plus 3 um, in the question x plus 3 squared, and you've got some stuff up here, then you need to make sure that you write down all the factors of that x plus 3 squared. Yeah, so you'd have something like that. If you had something where you had x plus 3 cubed, you'll need to make sure that when you write it on this side, you write down all of the factors of x plus 3 cubed, and so on. Yeah, so something like that. Right, so um, let's write down question 11x squared plus 14x plus 5 over x plus 1 squared, so that has a factor of x plus 1, 2x plus 1, and we want to write it in the form a over x plus 1, so it doesn't appear in the original question, but it's a factor of x plus 1 squared, plus b over x plus 1 squared, plus c over 2x plus 1. So step number one, multiply out the right hand side so we get the same denominator. Now the first fraction doesn't need to be multiplied by x plus 1 squared, just x plus 1. That will then give you x plus 1 squared and then 2x plus 1. The b doesn't need to be multiplied by x plus 1 because it's already a factor just need to be multiplied by 2x plus 1 and the c term that needs to just be multiplied by x plus 1 squared because that contains the factor of x plus 1 and that is equal to the numerator of the other side okay so now we're in a position where we can let x equal certain numbers so let's let x equal negative 1. So when we make x equal to negative 1, we will end up with 2 on the left hand side. And then we will have that equal to negative 1b or negative b. So that means that b is negative 2. So that's the first one. Uh, then we'll ch make x equal to negative a half. Now if we make x equal to negative a half, we will end up with um, 11 on this side, 
on the right, left hand side and that will equal 2a plus c so slightly different to before we don't just end up with a single number or a single letter because of this repeated factors um, now we'll put that to one side for the minute because um, we'll need to work out what c is so we've got uh, something that we can use there now the problem is trying to find c yeah because there isn't a number that you can put in that is going to make the c disappear let me just correct my mistakes so let's go back here sorry if we make x equal a half we'll get three quarters on the left hand side and that will equal a quarter c which means that c equals three so ignore what i was saying about the other equation now the problem comes when we try to work out a there isn't a value i can substitute for x that is going to make this bracket and this bracket disappear so I end up um, uh, just like getting uh, working those out that's that can't happen I can't do that so I need to find another method to work out uh, what a is and so this is where I might go back to equating coefficient so actually now to work out a I need to equate coefficients so for example I might look let's have a look at for example the x squared terms so um, oh yeah what I was saying before is that you there isn't a value of let me sort of say it a slightly different way there isn't a value of x that's going to make this bracket and this bracket disappear leaving you with the stuff in orange yeah so that's why we need to equate coefficients you can't make b and c disappear you can make a and b disappear you can make a and c disappear but you can't make b and c disappear so we're going to look at the x squared terms on the left hand side we have an 11 in front of x squared now the next bit i'm going to try and do without actually having to expand the brackets but think what would be in front of the x squared term so from the first set of brackets here if i multiplied that out i'm only interested in the x squared terms i would have 2a x squared yeah if you multiplied a by x and by 2x i wouldn't get any other x terms from the first bracket now I wouldn't get any uh, x squared terms from the second bracket yeah, if you multiply that there's not going to be any x squared terms but if I multiply this bracket I would end up with c x squared so plus c x squared so 11 equals 2a plus c I suppose I could um, have said from there that 11 is equal to um, 11 x squared is equal to 2a plus c squared like that so I can say uh, 11 equals 2a plus c now I've worked out c so 11 equals 2a plus 3 take away 3 from both sides a equals 2a so a equals so now we're ready to write our final answer and let's write the final answer in purple 11 x squared plus 14 x plus 5 over x plus 1 all squared times by 2 x plus 1 that's equivalent to a which is 4 over x plus 1 plus b is all oh right let's put a 
b is negative 2, so I'm going to write minus 2 over x plus 1 all squared. And then the last one is c, which is 3, 3 over 2x plus 1. Okay, so that's how we deal with when we've got these repeated um, factors in the denominator. So now you can do exercise 11e on page 13.